is my show to do your goddamn. Hey, that's a, <laughs> I'm constantly healing. I've been in a place where a lot of people have misplaced their anger. Anybody got, I, I have smoke with is direct. I'm like, I, I'm prioritizing what matters. Really, I'm just trying to diversify my bonds, you feel yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> what I'm not, I'll never be. Love was so ah! <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. Chicago is the people, but you cannot talk, you eat. Huh? What? She, she eat that Chick-fil-A macaroni. Please. And let me tell you something. <laughs> I will be a lot of things, but I will never be as a white person. Peace. Famous nigga house. <laughs> that oh. motherfucker grew back. <laughs> <laughs> my big break may not look like what I want my big break to be. Like, I don't know if, how much of a star I want to be. Yeah. My eyes set on something, nothing can deter me from that. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are willing to forgive people that are just honest. For, for sure. Now, if you was an everyday nigga on the street, I would just call you Dusty and keep going about my <laughs> day. What's up, y'all? And welcome back to another episode of Beauty Business with Paris. Today, we have our special guest, the beauty, John Doe, aka JD. And we are about to get into her business, okay? We talked dating, we talked drama, we talked growing, and we talked embarrassing moments. This girl is crazy, y'all. <laughs> and we also talked the west side of Chicago, you know, the place that ain't got no grass. But we gonna get into that later, you know? So stay tuned and keep watching. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> so let's get into this glam. Um, so your name is John Doe. What would you prefer to be called? You call me JD. Okay, I'm gonna do JD. Okay, okay cool. Um, so how old are you? Where are you from? It's the birthday line. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, oh, it is. is. <laughs> okay. It's JD. It's JD. <laughs> um, I'm 27 from the west side of Chicago. Oof, the ghetto. <laughs> You want a drink? Not too much. <laughs> you want a drink? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, I got you. Not too much on the west side. Not too much on the west side. Only west side is drink rum. There you go. And do say in Hennessy. Um, and do say in Hennessy. Yes. Like like niggas. Yeah. Y'all be out Pretty there. Much. We drink like niggas, smoke like niggas, fight like niggas. <laughs> y'all be out there poor y'all looking at the Nah, that ain't, I won't, I won't embrace that stereotype. Meh, 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 meh. Oh, you heard what I said. That's the South Side don't be having grass all the time anyway. Well, just, when we don't be having grass in the winter? There's plenty of places that don't have grass. And it's no place that Instead got of y'all blaming the city that's to blame the white man, <laughs> y'all rather use it to, to hold us to a different standard please, as please, an underserved community. Please don't use and my show to do your goddamn. And that's what we not finna do. I cannot. As the alderman of... <laughs> <laughs> you really be acting like you represent the people. I do represent. <laughs> I represent the West Side for sure. They might not know it yet. I'm crying. So how did you get into music? Uh, how did I get into music? I started just writing a lot, doing spoken word in middle school. Um, I was into like theater first when I was younger. That's what my mom got me into. She take me to all the crazy ass. Get your kid on Disney convention. Yeah, <laughs> but they used to scam y'all. Yeah, but I, one of them places I did get very close to getting the Oscar winner commercial, <laughs> and they liked me because I learned a song so fast. So my mom was just gassing that story up for the longest. Like she was almost in this commercial. But yeah, anyway, I um I was doing spoken word, and then my friend Kim Bay, he was rapping, and then I met my cousins like sobbing them through my cousin Walter and they was making music so they was like come to the studio just try some shit. I spent like a whole summer going to Saba House and eventually I feel like I became like John Doe like who that was making it into a sound type shit. Are there any artists that like inspire you or like motivate you? Yeah um growing up I feel like my I had so many different, I always had like a wide palette, like listening to stuff. I always listened to a lot of like alternative stuff. Um, but I listened to a lot of like Neo Soul too. I listened to a lot of Amy Winehouse, a lot of hip hop, like old school hip hop, Biggie and Tupac and Lil Kim and that 90s R&B too. So I think I got a good mix of everything. You know, Chicago, we know 
R and B. Yeah. If we don't know nothing else. We know good R&B. And we so. know good music, period. We know good music for sure. Yeah. But R&B got roots. R&B and the blues got roots in Chicago. So I feel like I've always been well-rounded as far as being inspired by a lot by a lot of different artists. That's what's up. Are you more spiritual or religious? Or both? Hmm. I don't know. Some spirituality stuff can be seen as a religion. I think I'm still figuring that out right yeah. now. I'm in that place in my life where I'm trying to figure out what I what I what I really believe in. Yeah. But I know I, I am really spiritual and I am I did grow up in the church and I kinda just I respect everything that I, I know so far. Yeah. I'm like I have to make no choice, no time so so how do you keep going? Like, is it faith or is it something else? Or is it a combination of things? I think it's faith and just, it's faith in myself, but faith, um, faith in myself, faith in a higher power and faith in like where I come from. You know what I'm saying? Like the people that came before me, my ancestors, you know, my family that's still here. Just like faith in the tangible things as well as the things I can't see, you know? Yeah. Um, that, that's what keeps me going mostly. I feel like these days it's really hard to stay inspired with all that's going on in the world. Yeah. How do you deal with stuff when you down and when you're not feeling motivated? Mm, good question. Um, <laughs> I... I don't know. I need I need a longer process time than I feel like a lot of people that I know, like some people can just, I mean, I can keep moving too, but I tend to just like withdraw and be isolated. Yeah. So I'm trying to work on not doing that so much and knowing that like we lost a lot as far as like community and being able to be around people, I try to just be learning how to be vulnerable and just being like going around my friends like I I need to be around people or like yeah today I need to be distracted or I need to go to work you know just being honest with people about where I'm at yeah it has been it's been a crazy past two three years for everybody for everybody yeah surviving a pandemic surviving a recession trying to stay motivated through it all and not give up on your dreams is definitely hard yeah and it's definitely a day by day type of thing. So do you do you lean on your friends? Do you? I know you said you you take space from them, but I feel like you the type of person that show up for your friends a lot. Why don't you let them show up for you? Um, I don't know. I feel like I I, I probably have something like from when I was a kid, where it's just very hard for me to ask for help. You know, like it's very hard for me because I'm like usually there for people. I'm like, it's just very hard for me to say, now I need help, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or I need somebody to be there for me. Um, and when I am there for people, I'm not doing it so they can be there for me. So yeah, maybe that's kind of like a toxic trait because I be hoping people could just know, you know, so I don't yeah. have to ask. And if they don't know, then I just don't say nothing. So, but I'm, I'm working on that. Yeah, um, how do you feel like all of your trauma has affected like your day to day or your life now. Like, have you started to heal from it? Are you still going through the motions? Like, what's the? I think I think I'm I'm constantly healing from stuff. You know, like us being from Chicago, being from the type of environments that we grew up in. You just all there's always going to be something else to unlearn yeah. to heal from. And that's kind of where I'm at in my journey now. I'm just at that point of acceptance where, like, it's a lot of work to do, you know. It's not going to happen overnight. So I feel like um, I feel like I'm coming out of it. That first year in the pandemic, really, it was tough. You know, people passing, you can't see them, and just being away from people and just being in a damn house all yeah. the time. Um, it, it was tough, but I feel like now I'm starting to, like, find a balance and trying to adapt to the new way we live in this life with freaking COVID and all, all the other stuff. 
I feel like for me with my trauma, I was like real angry and like real mean and real rude and nasty. And it was very hard to unlearn that. When I got to Houston, I started to unlearn it, but it was really when I got to LA and like I really got to be in a peaceful place to heal with myself and learn my ways and like really see how I was affecting the people around me, the people I love, the people I care about, like with my badass attitude and where it came from and being real with myself that I really started to heal. It's so interesting to like see how different people trauma like affect them because I feel like I'm so angry, but you the opposite like to me you never seem angry you always seem very patient and caring and i feel like that's because you've been through so much and you try to be understanding to other people's shit. and that's that's something i don't feel like i at first could understand yeah i mean i appreciate you saying that i won't say it like i don't get i don't have anger within me or i don't get angry I also feel like people that don't know me probably would think the opposite about me. Um, like a lot of people expect me to be like mean or like they get intimidated by me and yeah. they don't know how I really am. But I do, I, I am angry about a lot of things. I just think I've, I've been in a place where a lot of people have misplaced their anger that they had onto me. Yeah. So at a certain age, I was just like, I don't want to do that anymore. A lot of people do it to the people that are like closest to them and yeah. that, you know, care about them. And it's like, I don't want to be that person that like pulls somebody in just to let them have it when it's time. So I guess that, that was a part of it, but I do have, I get angry too. I just, I guess I've, I've learned how to like keep my shit at home yeah. <laughs> um, away from other people. What is it like being in the public eye and not being able to express yourself openly? Or do you feel like you can express yourself openly? Um, I think I think as time has went on, um, it's been, it's not like I can't. Like, I feel like I could do what I want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could say what I want, but I've gotten to a, a place where I'm like, Really, it was a conversation I had with my grandma not too long ago where she was just like, you know, you don't have to be personal with these people that don't really know you and that they haven't really earned that place yeah. to like see all the stuff, you know, all the personal sides of you. And that really just changed how I was online because I, I feel like my personality, especially when I was in high school, I would just come and kind of say what was on my mind. You know what I'm saying? Then I felt like, Nobody could really make me feel bad for it if it was just yeah. what I thought. You know what I'm saying? I've been educated a little bit more since I was younger, but also just being in the public, I, have, I really get genuinely surprised when people care yeah. about trivial stuff. You know what I'm saying? About like my personal life or if I'm beefing with this person or that. You know what I'm saying? Like. I think I'm still getting used to that, and I don't, and I feel like as my career grows, that doesn't necessarily slow down. Like the more successful you become, the more people are going to talk about you. Yeah. And I think the hardest thing, really, the past couple of years is like, the more I become successful and feel like I'm getting closer to my dreams, the more it's just random people just saying stuff about me that's not necessarily true. Yeah. And sometimes it's not that bad, but I think it's just the act of doing it of like. What's Speaking as if you know me or like even when people make up stuff, like it's just like why? <laughs> I'm just a regular person. I don't bother people. I might have strong opinions sometimes, but ultimately I'm not really anybody I I have smoke with is direct. I'm never like stalking people or like in people business like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't really get people like that. But that's what kinda comes with the territory in the industry I'm in, so that's why I've kind of like accepted it. Like, I'm a bad bitch. People gonna kind of be like, "What's to her?" Like, <laughs> so how do you deal with negativity when it does come about? Are you the type to ignore it? Are you the type to be in both? I mean, I feel like in the past, I definitely sometimes I cannot help it. Yeah, I, mean, I feel so... that. I feel that sometimes <laughs> it's just like you might be having a bad. I be day. so taken <laughs> back. And I've said that a lot too to those like random trolls. And sometimes like I give them too much power at times, yeah. which is why I started ignoring people. But like, 
you could be going through anything. You know what I'm saying? Like I have tweeted about something I was going through personally that had nothing to do with nothing. And it's people responding as if they know what I'm talking about or it's like, sometimes I can't help but to respond to be like, y'all just be kind of delusional a little yeah. bit. Like you, know? you don't even have a fucking clue what's yeah. going on. But then I just like, people are gonna do that regardless. Regardless. You so. can say the sky's blue and they're gonna be like, did you not see it was orange today? Yeah. Like, but you were in LA and I'm in New York. So it wasn't orange today, it was a blue. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. It gets ridiculous to some point. Um, and it, it does, I, like I said, if you're having a bad day or if you're just like, damn, sometimes I just want people to leave me alone. That's been my big thing is like, the stuff y'all talk about on the internet, my life and the issues in my life or even the positive stuff in my life is so much bigger than like the little petty shit. So I'm like, I got to a place where I'm like, I, I'm prioritizing what matters. And at the end of the day, whatever you're, this random person who doesn't know me is thinking, it don't really matter. Yeah, I feel like I'm the same. Um, I deleted Twitter a couple years ago, you know, during the pandemic because I just felt like it was just too much. Like it was too heavy. People opinions are too big about things that they don't have shit to do with. And I just don't understand. And I feel like I've taken a big step back from social media, but it's like we in an era right now where social media is so important and so powerful. But right. it's like, how do I choose between my peace and my my bag? Like it, it's so hard, I feel like, to step back from social media because we kinda unfortunately we need it at this point. I'm trying to reach the point where I don't need that shit at all. Where I can yeah, have that's my goal too. a private page and just live life on the beach somewhere. I think we in a digital age where you have to kind of lay a foundation with some type of internet presence. Yeah. And that's my goal too. Is like That's why I choose to just focus on the positive stuff because I'm like, I just want to build my platform up so I could just come and go. Yeah. I don't have to talk to y'all, engage with y'all all the time. Okay, somebody need to post for me. Y'all need to find my <laughs> Schedule my ready. shit, okay. you know, <laughs> blog some shit. Okay. But at some point, you can do that. And yeah. that's my goal. Like, you know, that's what Kendrick does. That's what Beyonce basically does. Um, and Beyonce is like a big inspiration as far as me. Like, a, a few celebrities I can look at and be like, I see that they know how to keep their lives separate. Yeah. And that's what I want for myself. I want to be able to be an artist and a public figure and, a, you know, all the things that I do, but then still be able to go home and be who I am. Yeah. I think the thing, though, that, like, I had to be realistic with myself with, though, is those people worked really, really hard and was in the media and was doing all of this stuff. And then they was able to scale back. I feel like I'm just supposed to be able to just jump there without putting in no real work. Not to say we ain't, I ain't putting in no real work because I've been working for years, but it's like you got to keep on giving it your all until it comes. And then I get to step back and be a grandma and hide my page. Yeah. I would love to. I'm like, deep down, I just want to be a mama one day, maybe have a family or something, and go to work sometimes, if I want to. Okay. <laughs> if I want to. go. <laughs> Not just having to go nowhere. How important is friendship to you? I mean, friendship is a necessity. Um... It's also a luxury, you know, to be, to have people that are good people and good company and really want to see you win. Yeah. Out here, it's like, I have a lot of friends back home. Um, I want to say like a lot, but I have good friends back home that I've had for a long time. So here it's like kind of starting over. Everything just feels so political. So like friendship is super important to me. I just... I need to make sure it's pure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like real friendship. Yeah, I feel like I definitely have my run in of people just kind of wanting to get to know like the internet parents and it's like, y'all know like I'm a real person like with a real life vibe and, and like, I don't, I don't feel like I act no type of way on the internet to even portray like, um, I'm sorry, we open me off. I don't feel like I even act that way on the internet to portray like I got this whole different personality. Like, why are you searching for something like in me? I don't know. People just, they be users and they be weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I get that sometimes when people are like, oh, when I followed you online, just never thought you would be. I, I feel like people expect me to be very serious. 
all the time. And like arrogant. Like they always talk about yeah. how humble I am. And I'm like, am I not humble on the internet? Like, I feel like, yeah, I'm a bad bitch, but I don't just be popping my shit like I'm the baddest bitch. You, you dusty hoes, y'all gonna be picking my fruit mm-hmm. out. Like, I don't feel like I'll be on that yeah. level. So, like, why is everybody always telling me, like, oh, you so humble in real life? Like, I'm not like that. We're on just the young black women, and you are ambitious and very self assured. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes yeah. people can take that as ego or conceited. And not just me knowing who I am. Right. And that's also like something I can't stand is like your personality gets so misconstrued on the internet, which is why I definitely took a step back from it. Like, I just don't feel the need to, I've never felt the need to like explain myself or like, I don't know, prove myself on the internet. And I feel like this social media era is just like, tell your life story, tell everything you've been through. Yeah. Trauma Explain everything. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Explain everything you've been through. Just let a bunch of people judge you on the internet, and I'm just not with that. Like, mm-hmm. but I I remember a time where I was like that. You know, like when I wasn't here, when I wanted everybody on the internet to know my business. And like a lot of times, like we're young, so yeah. a lot of that was us in our youth. Yeah. That's just a part of it. And it's like we, as a world, we really need to heal from so much stuff because we headed in the wrong direction. Yeah. But at the same time, I, what I love about the internet is that we do be like coming and helping each other and showing up for each other. Yeah. It's just like, it's real split. And it's sometimes it's sad, sometimes it's happy. Well, since the pandemic, I feel like a lot of people have really leaned on the internet a lot, as was, would have been natural, you know, because people can't really go outside and socialize anymore. So yeah. obviously, social media becomes like a crutch for a lot of people. So. That's like a good and a bad thing. You get positive from it, you get negative from it. And so a lot of people kind of move away from social media, like don't give it as much attention or energy as they used to. So what's next for you with music? Is the album coming soon, EP, mixtape, what's the vibe? (laughs) Um, Well, I do have some, two EPs coming out this year. At this point, I don't really be knowing the difference between an EP and an album, but I know I, in my mind, I haven't made an album yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I have two EPs coming, which is really like mixtapes to me because they just two projects. And then I have a film project coming with that also that I'm super excited about. I shot last year. So you venture out in different avenues. Yeah. That's lit. I'm really trying to break into the um, film industry one way or the other. Uh, I've been acting a lot more like or trying to get more into the acting world again. So hopefully I'm just trying to diversify my bonds. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, I feel, I feel the ready same to make way. make them M. Okay. I'm ready to move up out of makeup and start doing other things. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to act to finish in school right now. Um, I'm just, I'm excited about the future. I'm excited to just, well, I ain't excited to be 30, but child, we get I there, am. so. You are. 30, 30, yeah. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like. I feel know. like every black woman, especially, always, that's like in their 30s already, they always tell me that it's lit. Yeah. Like, you just be super financially stable. Yeah, they say you know your yourself. Your 20s with money. <laughs> you sexy. Like, it's just like, I'm ready. Yeah. At this point, we got two years left. Right. So. The pandemic took out this 20s. Right. No, really. <laughs> but I'm trying to run it up the last two years in my 20s and really just make myself proud. So I go off into 30 like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Even though I'm still like, oh, my God, I'm going to be 30. Like, it's just crazy that I'm already about to be 30. Like, that's just insane to me. Yeah. So, speaking of 30s, are you dating anyone? <laughs> what the hell, 30s? <laughs> <laughs> I knew when I look at your face, you going to say something. <laughs> um, what does 30 have to do with dating, child? You know, people get married in their 30s, you know? Mm. Is marriage on your, you know, to-do list? Or what's the vibe? Mm. You single? You... Here's the thing, like... I wouldn't be surprised if I get married. You know what I'm saying? But it's not a goal. It's not like a, I have to. I feel like that's really something that needs to come on its own. Naturally. naturally. Yeah. But you know, hey, you know what King Von said? <laughs> what King Von say, please? I am what I am. <laughs> what I'm not, I'll never be. What? <laughs> So that's my answer to that. <laughs> what the fuck did I 
I am what I am and what I'm not. I never, never be. be. Do that mean I'm single or I'm, what the fuck does that mean? You say it is what it is. But I'm not. I will never be. <sighs> so if I end up being a wife, that means I always was. So what's your type? You like rappers? You like basketball players? You like? I wouldn't even classify my type as like a type of career. Um, I guess I feel like most of the dudes I meet is somehow in my world. For sure. Like so far, it's like you really only run into people that you kind of in the same circles yeah. with. Yeah. Um, I guess my type is just very assertive. Um, and just honest, which is like assertive, like that's like choke you up or sort of ah! like. <laughs> oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> what kind of assertive? I mean, assertive is you gonna do you gonna do what you gonna do to me type thing. I'm just gonna get in line. You not gonna listen? Not on no crazy <laughs> shit. The thing is, on a day to day, nobody is telling me what to do. Period. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like when I'm into me, like I don't want a nigga gonna boss me around a little bit. And you gotta have a backbone already to even have the confidence to do that. Yeah. I feel like I be meeting men, they get real shy around me. You know what I'm saying? Which like, I could be assertive too, but don't let me just run you around. Yeah, I can't stand I'm, I'm not attracted to that at all. Me neither. Men or women, you gotta have a little get back with me. Or yeah. Like, I ain't even gonna be interested. Even friendship, like, if you too soft to have a conversation with me, it's like, we joke. We from Chicago. Yeah. So, if you can't handle that Chicago vibe, it's like, ugh. Yeah. I, don't really I, yeah, I guess I'm interested in men and women. I, I like either one to be just assertive, just, you know, confident. Um, I love people who rough around the edges for sure. I guess that's been my <laughs> M.O. in the past. <laughs> you know, people that have been through some things. I feel like I can't really relate to nobody who ain't really been through shit. Cause yeah. I, I feel like I can't really be myself. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess. Oh, I don't know. Did that answer the question? <laughs> I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you, girl. I need a soldier. <laughs> no, I need a soldier. With a top now. <laughs> I'm crying. Yeah, I want a soldier. Period. Period. So, how you like in LA since she moved out here? You think this your forever home? You think you know what? Yeah. What's your favorite place you lived? I only really have lived here in New York and Chicago. Obviously, my favorite place would be Chicago. <laughs> you say I, I'm repping it to the day. I was born and raised there. That is my favorite place that I ever lived. Yeah. It's just I've lived there for so long. It's time to move on. It's time yeah. for a new chapter. For sure. I don't see myself moving back home anytime soon. For sure. Maybe if I was like getting kind of old and I was ready to just chill, maybe. Um, but I don't see myself moving back home and I don't really know where I would go and start over. I do love Atlanta. Do you? Yes. How much hookah can you hookah? I know, that's why I'm like, so I don't know how long no I would last. <laughs> I feel like I would go to Atlanta. I feel like I could go anywhere and live there for a couple weeks or a month or two. But I'm like, ultimately, I'll probably end up coming back here. I feel like, uh, just like I was saying earlier, how I want to be able to just like not post, not be reachable. I feel like I will stay in LA, like I will have a home in LA, but I could ultimately just be traveling. Like I would be getting villas for a month and I will be everywhere around the fucking world because I don't think I'm just gonna be able to just stay in the US. Like the yeah. US ain't, ain't, it ain't getting that. The, the, I've been overseas and the food is just, it's fresher and yeah. the air is just feel good. Like yeah. I see myself definitely traveling, but I'm just, I'm a tourist, I'm an earth sign. I need a place to Lay your come head. home to yeah. and feel comfortable in. So I can't just, I'm not one of those people that can just move around and place backpack to place. through the world. Mm -mm. No. I think, I think unfortunately because I live that life, not unfortunately, but because I, you know, come from that, look at me. Because I come from that, it's a little bit easier for me to be able to like move around. But I am very glad to be stable now because I feel like all that bouncing around and the life that I lived when I was younger, I do not miss that shit at all. Yeah. 
It was crazy. It's just too much. I definitely feel like I got too much trauma in Chicago now. Just so many memories, sad memories and stuff. So it's like when I go home, it's just like it's nothing to look at for me. It's like you get on the highway. Well, I don't know what the way, I really don't know much about the west side of what it looked like. Like it just don't look like nothing to me. <laughs> but, but Chicago, besides the skyline, <laughs> it ain't really a Chicago has some beautiful places, but it's not really about the looks. It's yeah, just about it's just the vibe the and the place, culture, the actual yeah. place. For sure. I'm hoping they don't lose that with all these white people gentrifying everything. <laughs> but Chicago is the people. Everything about it, from the food to the culture to the spirit you get there. And when people go on tour, when I hear, when I talk to artists, touring artists, they always say Chicago one of my favorite places to perform. I'm like, cause you get that. Oh, it be lit. Energy. Oh, it be you lit. Get that real energy. When we went to see Ari Lennox in Chicago, she played the House of Blues. Chicago had that motherfucking ghetto. Yeah. Singing every word, drunk. It was just like black and beautiful. And I'm like, that's some shit. I wouldn't trade for nothing in the world. Like if I have kids, they have to go home. They gotta see the city, whatever. I don't care if it's totally different. I'm, okay. I'm trying to explain to y'all how it used to be. <laughs> this used to be like the old people. This used to be this over here. It's what we really becoming at though. Maxwell That's the crazy used to part. stay open 24 hours. <laughs> they, can't, they can't take Maxwell's. Now they take Maxwell's, I'm just gonna have to start right. You know it ain't open 24 hours no more. Mm. They only, it's only open till I think midnight now. I'm like, this is insane. Oh wow. Yes, that was Maybe like Maybe because that. of the pandemic, though. The pandemic closed a lot they, of places. They took the, they, the lease person and made them, the owner made them um, switch their lease or something. Something, something stupid. Mm. I'm like, damn. I, it's so crazy because I feel like I don't even know what be going on in Chicago. Like, I don't know what restaurants they got now. I don't know. Yeah. A lot, of, know a lot of things are different. Yeah. It's like sad. I was just thinking like, I'm gonna have to go to Chicago like as a tourist and like get on TikTok and figure out what the fuck Chicago got going on. Right, that would be a good TikTok. Yeah, though. I was, I was, I've been thinking about that a lot. Like I have to go home and be a tourist in my own city because. But my sisters, they still live there. So I be, when I come home, well, my older little sister, she be kind of telling me where she go and stuff. And I'm just like, wow. That do make you a little homesick. Right. Like, what's going on? I should be wanting to eat because this LA food. This LA food is not it. LA food, yeah. I want. I'm not gonna look. We live here now, so I'm not even. Gonna, <laughs> you say this. This our home. I'm not gonna hate on them. They do got some spots. <laughs> the thing is, you do gotta kind of go to the hood. Yeah, I'm not going to the kinda hood. Kind of how it is. Well, I won't say it's not like that. It's not like that in Chicago. It's not. Right. Food good. Period. But LA do have some spots. I'm gonna give them. They that. they got a couple. And they spots. black owned spots do hit. Uh. My you, two cents was a hit. Yo, what? I don't know if you ever went there. It's called My Two Cents. That's a hit. The Fixing Kitchen, you know, I just found out about them. They decent. Girl, decent at best. They decent. They decent. You went on a bad day. I'm telling you, I went there twice. I stamp anything. And the two things I told you I had, you said you had, and they was good. No, what? The catfish nuggets. The catfish nuggets was good, yeah. You ordered the damn macaroni. I don't know what your obsession why would is with macaroni. Why would I not eat macaroni if I don't I trust every restaurant? I'm from Chicago. I don't trust everybody macaroni. If I can't eat your macaroni, I should be eating shit from your restaurant. I just feel like I never. It tastes like mashed potatoes with cheese. I just feel like I haven't had no macaroni in here that will even touch what I could get in Chicago. The way we could eat some macaroni and yams from a restaurant. Yes. You can't, I I won't say you can't do that out here. Maybe maybe you a can. motherfucker could put me on, but <laughs> maybe a I haven't done it yet. Yeah, And I'm it. not eating everybody macaroni, period, because I only like Negro macaroni, the black people macaroni. I'm not eating no Jamaican people macaroni. Okay, I want no Caribbean macaroni. They all that shit nasty. I'm like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Doing? What are y'all? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, I'm just gonna say I prefer <laughs> the regular, regular Negro mac and cheese that people grandma used to make. Okay. Okay. Cause the shit y'all got out on the street. But you cannot talk. You eat? Huh? She, what? She eat that Chick Fil A macaroni. I, that shit was nasty last time I had. No, but you would no don't talk it about was last time. Tell the people we be eating it. It was good at first. Yeah, now watch. Anybody watching up like, yeah, you lost me. No, people eat Chick-fil-A <laughs> macaroni. She eat Chick-fil-A macaroni girl. <laughs> and you trying to this LA. I don't macaroni. think Chick I don't think Chick-fil-A macaroni tastes like the so fact you would even macaroni. champion Chick-fil-A this white <laughs> portion and call Fix the Kitchen. Here you like, go, here you go. Fix the kitchen. 
He will get with the white Stop people. Stop playing with Fix the Kitchen. Bro. Yeah, we went to go see Forever uh, Wakanda. Is that what it's called? Wakanda. I have to. <laughs> Next thing we call it Wakanda. <laughs> That will get black people. You know I'm that. dyslexic. Black people don't deserve You know nothing. I'm dyslexic. You know what the fuck I was talking about. Black people don't deserve nothing. Anyway, y'all know this girl so black. She acted a damn fool in the theater. A lie. The a lie. We got it in 4K. A it, lie. It might not be 4K. It might be uh. 10, they don't 80. have no footage of me acting a fool. 10, Everything 80. I did was certified, justified, and valid. Girl. They you gonna, had my, they had the mermaid fucked up. I ain't gonna lie. They were just trying to protect these white men. And y'all think it's a conspiracy. <laughs> but them Wakanda people was fine hard, fighting hard to protect the FBI men. <laughs> that nigga told y'all they gonna steal y'all vibranium. Y'all <laughs> so at the end of the day, I feel like I didn't act the fool. Y'all didn't act the fool enough. Y'all act fool enough. Y'all was uh, too scared. You are crazy. It was it was only four black people in the theater, which was exactly. us. Exactly. And let me tell you something. <laughs> I will be a lot of things, but I will never be as a white person. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Ever in my fucking life. <laughs> so if I have to go somewhere and I'm the only black person, it's my duty. <laughs> I don't care if it's out of my character. <laughs> it's my duty to do some nigga shit to and, the highest capacity. And you do it every fucking time. Oh, God. I don't give a fuck what it have to be. You feel me? That is too Let much. Let me stomach to an all-white anything. <laughs> you will fit right in. First 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say that's a black thing. Oh, we mute that, bitch. My video ain't getting taken down for this bitch being all black. <laughs> You just so goddamn black. I'm, I'm setting it off. <laughs> Blank that out. But just know, wherever I go, I'm I'm nigging it up. Uh, you definitely do. Fuck. They ain't finna date me like, yeah, I was almost not racist till I seen her ass. Yeah, exactly, bitch. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's crazy know. because typically I don't believe in embarrassment, but every time we go somewhere, you just get to act like a goddamn fool. She is lying, though. <laughs> it's all in your head. Girl. You know, then white people probably went home and said, I saw the funniest girl today. <laughs> I mean, she was really a hoot, honestly. I've never seen anyone behave Oh, I'm behave sure that, that is not what the fuck they were saying. Yeah, they were like, they was cracking. Anyway, what's the most embarrassing moment you've ever had publicly? Or, I mean, it could be private. Look at Okay. You know, but you're gonna say something else? I'm gonna say it, but I'm not gonna say where I was at. Okay, look up. Because it's too funny. But, okay, so I was at a very famous, kind of old school. I won't say like old school, old school. I would say like early 2000s. I was at a very famous early 2000s artist and his house. I was on the tour with somebody opening up for them. This person came to one of the shows and was like, y'all come to my crib after cause I got like a whole thing, uh, like set up in the basement. I'm gonna have some strippers come. <laughs> cool, right? So before this, I don't know if this story gonna be kind of gross, but I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> so before I went on tour, I had just took my IUD out, my birth control. So like when I had an IUD in, I wasn't getting a period. So like it had been like months since I got my period back. My period decides to come down at this famous nigga house. <laughs> and it's like, damn near all white bathroom. So I'm like, I gotta pee. He like, cool, I'm gonna show you where the bathroom is. It's a guest bathroom, so I go in the bathroom, I go to pee. I get up, I'm bleed, like, I, it's like crazy. I'm like, oh my God, my God, my God. It was no tissue in there, it was nothing. I'm like, I'm just like panicking. So now I'm like, I'm trying to text the people I'm with, but we in a basement. So like none of the texts are going through. Oh my goodness. And I'm like, oh my God, they gonna come in and think somebody died. Like, <laughs> it was so bad. So I'm like, um, I finally I finally got in touch with somebody and they had brought me like some stuff to clean up. But I'm like, 
All I could think about was like, this nigga was like, this bitch was in my bathroom for 45 minutes. <laughs> like, everybody she thought I was in there, like, stupid. shit or something. <laughs> it was like, I couldn't tell them the real reason I took them there an Come hour on. in the bathroom. So they just all looking at me like, bitch, who the motherfucker that shit in there? So <laughs> and I'm like, I can't tell y'all the real reason. It's worse. <laughs> the real reason is like worse than the actual reason I think it was. So yeah, you I'm not gonna say his name really? because I feel like that would have went viral and then everybody would have found out that so and so house with you. That was very top three nightmares for me for sure. Yeah, I feel like all my most embarrassing moments like top involve my period. Like being a girl really do fucking suck. No, yeah, that's why I can never I also go never, never again. I never had one of those. I feel like every girl I knew growing up had one of those instances where they came on at school and like didn't know. I never had one of those situations. Oh yeah. So I'm like, the fact that never happened to me, I'm like, what Well, when I first got it, I was in sixth grade, so I thought, like, I cut it. Like, I thought, like, I like oh, cut it somehow. Like, I thought I cut it somehow. I'm like, I what the fuck done do I do? I have done it like a dummy. <laughs> I tried to shave. That's another embarrassing thing I did when I was a kid. I tried to shave, but I had some kitty scissors. <laughs> oh, God. I definitely used to, I definitely used to try to shave with Bitch, scissors. I cut a piece of my shit off. Wait, I definitely used to use scissors <laughs> to try to shave. I literally cut a piece of my shit off. I was sitting there looking like, <laughs> that motherfucker grew back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that motherfucker was going to grow up, I'm having to grow up with a piece of my shit gone, like, a nigga like, what the fuck happened to you? That was crazy as fuck. I wasn't going to tell my mama either because I was too young to be doing that stupid oh, shit. Right. right. No. Another time, okay, wait, one more beer story. It's <laughs> funny. Um, the first time I did my makeup. And I did, a, I had like a, one of them cheap ass makeup kits. It was all powder. I did an all powder foundation, but the the foundation was too red. I don't oh know God. if I would use blush or something. So I did like quick little makeup, took out the pictures of my little digital camera. And I'm like, all right, so I'm going to go out of my room and see if anybody knows how I did my makeup. The whole time I'm thinking I ate. I'm like, natural beat. <laughs> I can't live around. My mom and my auntie in the living room, they looked, they started busting out laughing. <laughs> I'm like, screaming, laughing, like, what the fuck is on your face? And I'm like, what is y'all talking about? What? That shit was funny as hell. That's how I knew I wanted Miss to be no makeup. <laughs> you killed me because your ass can't do no makeup, no help. You can do your makeup, makeup now. You can do your makeup. I do makeup. You know what? You now. actually do your makeup good. I'll give you that. It used to be bad, though. But it's bad for a while. JV, if you can't do nothing for your goddamn self. I can do my makeup now. Yeah, yeah, you can. I'm getting better for sure. Hair is still. A mama can't put a flat iron to her head at, at 27 years old. I can't, I can't, but it's not. You gonna put that motherfucker to it. You ain't gonna flat iron. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not gonna style it or nothing. You gonna get a good bust down. You wanna be quick, but let's right now. Come on, friend. Your shit a little. Hold on, get the back. Let me get the back for you, friend. I don't know how to get my own shit. <laughs> I'll get yours for you. <laughs> look out for me. I'll look out for you. It's like, girl, looking out for you is doing your whole goddamn head. Exactly. <laughs> Is I can't let you go out the house like that. <laughs> um, do you prefer to like announce your goals ahead of time or do you prefer to move in silence? Or well, like announce what you're working on or move in silence? Like um, to people? You can take that however you want to, to your friends, to your people. So. I mean, I want to tell my friends that I'm working on just so they know why I be busy, but. yeah. For the most part, I like to keep my work under wraps. I never know how shit gonna go. For sure. And I do believe in people hating on you a For little sure. bit. So I do, I keep a lot of shit in my I would rather people show people than tell them all the time. Yeah. I feel um, that. But yeah, having times where I like was excited and then some shit got pushed back or delayed or just didn't happen. So I'm like, I'd rather yeah, just see it when it comes true. For sure. Look up. When is the first moment like you knew like I'm gonna be a star? <laughs> I still don't have that moment yet. You don't have that moment. Mm -mm. You ain't had that moment. Like I think I have. I think I have incredible potential, but I think I'm just too. I won't say like I'm just a real logical or like rational. I just understand that like if I do make it, it's a blessing. If I do get to a place, it. 
I also understand that my big break may not look like what I want my big break to be. Yeah. So I kind of be trying to open myself up to not be like, well, I guess a star can mean anything, but I, I, I feel like the right opportunity will put me in a good place for sure. Yeah. I feel like I, I'm a likable person for the most part and I do good work, whatever I do. So I feel like with the right opportunity, it'd be hard to deny me like what I'm capable of. Yeah. But everybody don't get that shot. I feel like sometimes I find myself like wondering like, do I have too much faith? Like, do I, am I waiting on what I think is gonna happen and it's not realistic? But I feel like I can't never give up on like, what I know is destined for me. Cause like, mm -hmm. I've never been wrong about anything that I wanted to go after. I just feel like it's taking much longer and it's testing my faith more and more by the day, but it's gonna come because I just, I just believe that. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm gonna be straight. You feel me? Yeah. But also I think deep down what I struggle with is like, I don't know if, how much of a star I want to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I feel like I, I recline more and more and more like as the time go on and as I see people just doing this fake stuff and just like being these weird people and what the industry do to people like chew them up, spit them out. Yeah. It's like, damn, do I really want Even this? Even how people, like I was saying earlier, like how people are already negative or so invasive like already it kind of turns me off from the whole idea because i'm like i'm really a boring bitch like it's not <laughs> anybody that know me knows i really don't be you feel me so yeah like, it's also I like get turned off from the whole super stardom thing right for sure you definitely like to be in your room chilling <laughs> vibing coming up with new ideas new yeah my bad <laughs> um what was i gonna say Think for a second while I lie your lip. Um, what is the first time you were like super, super proud of yourself? Like, um, yeah, just super proud of yourself. It mm -hmm. felt like you accomplished something big. Or what are you most proud of that you have done? I feel like, I feel like every time I accomplish an idea i'm proud of myself just because of how much work i know and like attention to detail i put into things yeah um i think i definitely need to be proud of myself more and take some time to actually be like i accomplished something and acknowledge that um i would say that probably the most recent is like when i just finished like filming this stuff like that I shot for my next project in Atlanta. Yeah. Like I wrote it and I directed it and I casted it. And <clears throat> a couple days before I found that I had to executive produce it because the producer I was working with was full. So like the thing I'd be most proud of is not really what I accomplished. It just be my, the fact that like when I have my eyes set on something, nothing can deter me from that. Period. Sometimes I feel like God or like the universe will make things a little bit more challenging for me. Sometimes I feel like that where I'm just like, when problems arise, it's like in my head, it's like, how bad do I want this? Right. I want it worse than whatever is frustrating me right now. So as long as I can figure it out, I'll be straight, and I'm, I'm real proud of myself for that because I've been through a lot of shit and yeah. I'm still kicking. Yeah. I think sometimes, too, the, the challenge of, like, going through something and, like, it being hard is, like, us learning certain lessons. Like, I feel like a lot of the shit that I went through, like, even me being angry and me being mad, that kind of, like, has media trained me and, like, taught me what not to do for my next part of my career and, like, I had to learn from my mistakes. Sometimes you gotta make those mistakes to be able to learn from them. Yeah. So I feel like sometimes the hard way is just like a teaching way. Yeah. That's, I mean, every every lesson is just always not gonna be pretty. Right. But I am tired of the goddamn lessons. Like, yeah. when is the final exam? Man, <laughs> count me out. It's making it to old age I'm at ready, this point. I'm ready to graduate, God. What did you want with me, baby? <laughs> yeah. It's always going to be lessons, though. For sure. And that's the part about elevating, you know, just even me, the stress I went through before filming and stuff. I'm like, I never had these problems before. Right. Because I never self-produced yeah. right. something to this capacity. Right. So I could be like, oh, I'm tired of it. It's like, they not, the only way the lessons could stop coming is if you stop moving up. Right. If you get somewhere and you're comfortable and you don't want to be challenged no more, 
I could live like that. Yep. And I always, I always used to use an analogy. Like I used to play this game, and like every time you lose the game, you gotta start back on level one. Use what you know, learn what you learn to get to the next level, and then it's gonna be a new challenge. You're gonna fail it a couple times, and then you gotta start back over and get through it again. Like it's it's literally that simple. Like it's difficult, but it's simple. I feel like the more you have solutions for shit, the less problems you have, because you always gonna have problems. Yeah. That's true. <sighs> for sure. Um, do you have any goals, big goals for this year? My goal this year is to, even though I said all that about being a star, I do, I want to kick that door down and just, just level up as an artist, continue to grow my audience, um, to get to them, some of them prime time levels. That's what I'm trying to do. Like, yeah. I'm ready to make some real money. Okay. There's a lot of people out here making money. Like, people are not performing and people is not, like, they're not putting they, all of their effort in like I do. So yeah. I'm like, I'm just ready to show people what I got and get what I, I deserve. Right. Close, close, close. Um, sometimes it makes me a little sad, you know, to see like how people that's, I feel like, doing less than me are getting more, but I just be trying to wait on my time. But how do you deal with like that? With like, knowing you work twice as hard than somebody and it just come easier to them? Um, I feel like I, I'm never really deterred by people like that, but I, I feel like sometimes working with some people like that, it could be a lot of ego in it, where yeah. people feel like, because they have money or they went to this school or that school, they feel <clears throat> kind of superior over you. I feel like that's the only time it kind of like bothers me. Yeah. When you just assume, because I haven't been where you've been, that I haven't earned my spot like you. But at the end of the day, what I learned is like, we learn so much more from where we come from and what we've been through that yeah. other people will never know. Yeah. So. It's like, yeah, I work with people that went to school and had two degrees and stuff, but couldn't think on their feet, you right. know what I'm saying? And couldn't be creative with their resolutions, you know what I'm saying? Like, or find shortcuts to shit. Like, that's the type of shit you learn when you come from, you know, a different Struggle or a different struggle, yeah. environments here. Yeah. yeah. My survival skills definitely helpful in, in the real world. Um, sometimes I feel like people, um, don't understand survival skills and they'll never understand not that they'll never understand it but when you can't relate you just can't relate you know like when you ain't been there you ain't done that you ain't been there yeah. you ain't done that so i feel like sometimes like people do things like in their past like how we talked about just growing up and stuff like for me me and angry like me me and angry and letting my anger out in a world in a negative way like i know what that is but some people are never gonna understand what that is and with this cancel culture stuff it's like Y'all don't even know what people been through. Like, y'all don't know why they act the way they act. Y'all don't really know shit. Like, and I feel like I don't want to ever have to explain to nobody, like, what the fuck I been through. Because if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. Like, how do you feel like you're going to deal with stuff as it arises, like cancel culture and whatnot? The thing about cancel culture is, like, it's like there will, there's always going to be people who won't forgive you if you grow. Right. But I think... Here's the thing, like, cancel culture don't really be real. Right. If you are already established, it's not really going to be real. The same people that work with you are, and the same people that invested in you are going to make sure that they don't lose money right. from investing in you. But aside from that, if you're just talking about purely, like, culturally and with the people, a lot of people don't want to own up to their mistakes. They yeah. don't want to own up to, you know, being wrong. And I feel like a lot of people are willing to forgive people that are just honest. At the end of the day... Actions have consequences at the end of the day. Like, you, you do something, it's going to have a response. Every action has a reaction. Yeah. So, like, I feel like more people should learn that. And if more people move like that, then people will be kinder. I feel like overall. But I'm like, a lot of people be scared of cancel culture because they be fucked up people. Yeah, but also sometimes I feel like people just want explanation for things that don't have shit to do with them. Like, mm. you, it, it's not up to somebody to be like, Oh, well, I was going through it's a, not, a, a loss or I was dealing with something and this is what happened. Like, if I've healed with myself and I've healed with God and I've I've repented with God and I've forgiven myself and I've made the changes and I'm actively showing that I've changed, 
What more do y'all need to see? The thing is, the thing is, like I said, people own up to their uh, actions. Most of the time, people will forgive you and move on. It's always gonna be that group of people that don't, and it's like you can't really do nothing about them. Yeah. But overall, I just feel like, like I said, actions have consequences. If you if you hurt people, I'm not just talking about making a mistake, but it's like if you hurt people, you hurt people. And most of the people who are canceled, they want to be some type of public figure. Yeah. You want to be in the public eye. Yeah. So you have to deal with the public opinion of you. If you don't want to be, if you don't want to deal with the public opinion, don't be in public. I feel like even when I'm in public, I'm I'm not going to like deal with it well. Like I'm not going to deal with the public opinion because the public opinion is really like I mean, it's going to bother you because people are always going to have opinion. But I'm saying if the opinion is about a a crazy fucked up choice you made, then right, you got to stand sure. on it. Right, you made sure. a choice. Now that's what I'm saying. Making an everyday mistake or just being a human is yeah. different. People, some people are always gonna hate on you. Yeah. But that's what I'm talking about when people be canceling people for things they should be canceled yeah. for. For sure. I, but it's I a lot. Of, you gotta stand on that. Close. It's a lot of people that's getting. I'm gonna cut forward. It's a lot of people that's getting canceled for shit that ain't. You know, it ain't really nothing. It's like I feel like people get to the top, and then. Okay, let's find something to cancel right, right, for right. from ten years ago. Yeah. From from it's like okay, ten years ago I was a terrible fucking person, and now I've learned because but that's what see, life is about. Most people they like some people are moved, but are like more moved by that, and some people are not. And I think it comes down to a case by case. Like I said, it's always gonna be a group that's looking for your downfall, that are jealous of you or want to see you, don't want to see you succeed because they see you getting to the top. Yeah. But it's also people that like. You know, if they see you say something fucked up enough, like that man who's the DA and he got exposed for like hating on all them black women or dark skinned black women, and they like, oh, you should just forgive him. If you a district attorney and you used to be colorist and hateful of black women, like how do I know you you was being fair? Yeah, for how what do you I know do? not like that no more, for sure. Now, if you was an everyday nigga on the street, I would just call you Dusty and keep going about my day. <laughs> But different strokes for different folks. If you want to be in the public and do important shit, then you got to stand on whatever you used to believe in. Yeah. You can't just pop up. It's like if you really knew somebody that said something super fucked up to you one time. Yeah. And then you saw them years later and you're like, I mean, she cool, but shit, I can't. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget yeah. you saying that one fucked up thing to me. It's right. like, you just got to stand on the fact you said it. People going to, you going to have to live with it. Right. That's how I feel. I definitely got, I, really, I don't have no old tweets up anymore, but I'm like, when I was in high school, I said some fucked up shit. I definitely said some fucked up so shit. So I'm like, when people find anything that I said, they're going to be like, damn, what the fuck? And I'm going to be like, I was 15 <laughs> with a, from a very fucked up family, and I had to unlearn a lot of shit. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like I just had to unlearn a lot of shit. Um, and then also, I'm one of the people that just don't take disrespect. And it's a lot of people that... It's like, oh, I'm just now learning. I don't want nobody to walk over to me. Well, motherfuckers weren't walking over me from day one. So I had to learn how not to stop motherfuckers out instead of right, just not right. letting them walk over me. And that's why me. it's like, I felt cool. Like I could be offensive or say what I want to say because it's like, ain't nobody gonna do shit about it. But I'm yeah. like, a lot of people, even when I was on Twitter young, they didn't know how young I was. Right. So people would be reacting to my shit like, oh, this is fucked up. But they didn't know I was 14, 15, Right. And 16. then it was like, even my followers was way older than me. The people who was giving me a platform, they thought I was their age. Right. Because they were still as ignorant as I was as a kid. Right. But I'm like, it's a lot of things. And I said some fucked up things, but then there's stuff that I know I didn't do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've never been a colorist. I've never been... Racist yeah, against I, black yeah, people. Yeah, I feel like that's that's. The, I never been. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I probably didn't say some fucked up shit about different things that I didn't know nothing about. But I'm like, overall, I don't think I ever been a bad person. I just didn't know no better. Yeah, I feel the same way. And just the look. Oh my god. Yeah, so pretty. It's giving it it more real It's really yeah. It's giving bright. Damn, babes. we need to go somewhere. <laughs> Yes, you look so pretty. I'm Thank loving you. the Thank lavender. You. I love the lip. It's, it's giving purr.